Okay folks, today we're going to upgrade the RAM in this Acer ES1 511C59V laptop. It's a very popular inexpensive model right now. It comes standard with 4 gigs of RAM. We're going to upgrade it to 8. Um, you need to be careful that you buy the right type of RAM. Um, this machine only has one slot. Sometimes when you buy 8 gigs of RAM they'll give you two 4 gig modules, but that's not going to work since there's only one slot. And also the speed is important and the voltage and other things like that but I'll put a link down below this video in the description um, to the kind of RAM you need. I'll just uh, link right to a page where you can buy the exact RAM you need. Um, also I did another video about this laptop that was a full review of the machine but I have a feeling if you're watching this you already own it. Um, I also did a video on how to install an SSD in this computer. So be sure to check out my other videos about this laptop um, if you're interested. Alright, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is flip the computer over. And uh, this guy is a little bit trickier to work on than some other uh, computers. Some you just have a little panel you open and you can access the RAM quite easily. This one you have to unscrew the entire bottom of the machine. And it's a little tricky to pop open even after that. But I'll walk you through it all. Um, so what you're going to need here is you need a Phillips head screwdriver, you need a flathead screwdriver, I'm just going to use a Swiss Army knife, and you need a container to put all the screws in because you're going to end up with a whole bunch of screws. Alright, let's get started. Okay, this final screw right here um, isn't related to the bottom. It's needed to take out this what looks like a DVD drive, but it's really just a placeholder. It, you know, covers up a slot where there would be a DVD drive. Okay, now with that screw out, this DVD placeholder will just slide out. Okay, now we've got all the screws off, um, but it still doesn't open easily. It actually gets a little bit trickier at this point. So I'll flip the computer back over, open it up, tip it back on its side, and now this front edge here is still held together by little clips that we need to get apart. So what you need to do is pry it open a little bit. You can't get it open very far. And then you take your flathead screwdriver and just kind of wedge it in there. You don't want to go in too far because there's electronics in here that you don't want to damage. But just put it in just past the, the lip here. And now uh, the, the top piece kind of goes over the bottom here. So it seems like you would pry it down this way to make it pop open. But because of the shape of the latches inside, you actually have to pry the bottom part forward seems a little bit backwards but you want to push over as far as you can this way toward, to get as close as you can to the clip and then just bend over like this and it'll pop open and then you just go along the edge doing that you open it up a bit get over as far as you can towards the next clip and then just flip over like this and it'll pop the clip op open and you just keep going. Uh, looks like I missed a couple of screws. So I got all the clips open, but it still won't come off completely because there's a couple of screws here. So if after you get all the clips undone, it's still a little tricky to open up, check for extra screws. Okay, let's try that again. All right, now it just opens up. We'll open it like there's a hinge in the back. Be careful because there's these cables inside that hold the top keyboard 
part onto the base of the computer. You don't want to just lift off the keyboard because you'll yank these cables and it could cause trouble. Uh, so what we need to do is disconnect these cables one at a time to give us more room to work. But you can't just pull them out. There are little latches that lock them in place to keep them from pulling out uh, while you're just using your computer. So if you look on each side of this connector here, you'll see a little uh, whitish beige tab. There's one on each side. And it's the same for this big connector up here too. And those are locking tabs. What you need to do is push those forward. You'll feel them slide. And you can do each one separately. You don't have to try to push both at the same time. And then once they're both, both pushed forward, the cable will just pop right out. Now we want to do that over here on this cable as well. Okay, and now this last cable back here, um, it's got a locking connector that goes all the way across, and I find it very difficult to move. So we're going to see if we can just leave this one connected and do the whole operation without disconnecting this cable, just to save us the trouble. Okay, so... Um, over here, incidentally, you can see the hard drive. Uh, this one I've upgraded to an SSD. Your pro yours probably doesn't look like this if you haven't upgraded your machine. I did a video on how to upgrade this as well. Um, but what we're interested in now is the RAM. So we'll just lay the computer back down. And now we'll lift up the keyboard slightly and move it over. Okay, now that we've got those two cables connected inside, we want to slightly lift up the keyboard. Not too high though, because you don't want to pull on that cable that's still connected, and gently move over this way to expose the hard drive. You'll start to see that cable is still connected um, getting exposed over here, so you don't want to pull it too far. Just enough to expose the hard drive and these connectors along this edge of the motherboard. Um, because we're going to have to take apart these connectors in order to be able to flip over the motherboard. So to do that, we need to take out the hard drive. So this is very similar to my video on how to replace the SSD. Um, you'll see a cable going right here that is blocking the screw for the hard drive. So you're going to want to gently lift that up out of the way, being careful not to damage the insulation around it. Um, this is the cable that uh, controls your video display um, and the, the insulation here blocks interference so you want to not damage that. So now you just pull over here, kind of wiggle it back and forth and you can get that to slide out. And lift it out of the way and you'll see this screw right here holding in the hard drive. So we want to take that out. You'll notice this screw is a little different than the others. It's silver rather than black, so it's pretty easy to distinguish, but you remember where that one goes. Okay, now that we have the hard drive unbolted, we want to pull the hard drive this way, um, but there's pieces of plastic here blocking the path, so we want to lift it up just enough to clear this plastic, but not too much because we'll break the connector here, so lift it up and then wiggle it back and forth as you go and it'll just slide out. And then we just put that aside. There's also a screw over here holding in the fan that we need to remove. Okay, now we just flip the keyboard over, being careful not to overextend the cable that's still connected. And we've exposed the motherboard. Um, there's still a few places that it's held in here, so we can't take it out just yet. We'll start by disconnecting these cables that go to the battery pack. You just wiggle them back and forth until they come out. And there's a screw over here that we need to remove. And a screw over here holding in your Wi-Fi module.
Now this screw is black like all the screws that held in the bottom of the case, but it's actually different. The threads are much smaller and the head is bigger and flatter. So keep this one apart from the others. Okay, now we want to remove our Wi-Fi module. You're going to have to lift up this tape here. Now, our motherboard is loose, so we can lift it up a little bit. And just wiggle that guy out. There we go. All right, now we can try to flip over our mother our motherboard to expose the bottom where the RAM chip is. Just wiggle it loose. And you can just flip it over. Okay, there we go. Now all the work pays off. Here's our memory module. This is what we were after all that time. Um, it's got a socket down here, and there are two little metal tabs that go up the sides. You just pull the tabs out to the side, and the module will just spring up. It's spring-loaded on a hinge, so it will pop this way, and then you can just lift it out. Ta-da! Now, to upgrade, you just put in the new chip. I didn't actually get a new chip, I just wanted to demonstrate this process to you, but it'll be shaped exactly like this, and you'll notice there's a notch in here and a notch here, so it can only go in one way. It won't fit in backwards, so you don't have to worry about that. You just line it up, line up the two notches, then um, have it tilted this way a little bit, uh, push it in, and then once it's in as far as it goes, you just push towards the connector with both uh, hands while you're pushing the top down and you'll feel it snap into place with these two pieces right here and it should end up parallel with the board and now you've just replaced the RAM module so now we just have to do everything backwards to put it back together flip the motherboard back into place This one is a little bit tricky, but it's doable. Now these black and white cables coming out of here, those are your antennas. You're going to want to make sure those stay connected during this process. Okay, now we replace the screws. Remember, the screw for the Wi-Fi module is different than the others. The screw for the fan is also different than the other silver screws. It's longer and skinnier. Now we'll reconnect all the connectors that we took out. Flip the keyboard back over. Reinstall our hard drive. Being careful about this cable again.
Okay, before screwing the keyboard back on, just take another look around at all the connectors, make sure everything is plugged in and that you haven't knocked this guy out. Um, that'll cause problems. Make sure your antennas are still on here. And then uh, we'll just put this back on. And then redo those two ribbon cables that we disconnected. Okay, um, you just want to make sure that the locking tabs are still pushed forward. They can slide back into a locked position on you and then it'll cause trouble. So once they're slide, slid forward, you want to just slide your ribbon cable back in. This one you want to put in up to that white line past these little fingers here. You can see there's uh, metal fingers. So you just slide it into place up to the white line. And then when it's all the way in place, you push the locking tabs back down. And that will secure it so it doesn't come out accidentally. And then the same thing with the other cable. This one you want to push in all the way up to, well, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a black line just past the metal fingers. You want to insert it up to that black line. The metal finger shouldn't be exposed at all. Lock it back into place. Make sure it's secure and then take one last look to make sure that this cable hasn't been yanked out. Okay, once the cables are connected again, it's time to close it up. And then it's much easier to uh, snap it back together than it is to open it up in the first place. You just line it up and then just squeeze. And just work your way around. And once they're all snapped together, close it up. And it's time to put the screws back in. Start by sliding the DVD drive placeholder back in place. Screw it back in first. And then we'll just go around replacing all the screws. Okay, all done. We've now upgraded the computer to 8 gigs of RAM. I'll put a link down below the video in the description to a RAM module that is certified to work with this particular computer. That's the one got you with this whole process. You've got to make sure you use the right RAM or it just may not work when you turn the thing on. All right, that's all. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to learn more about this computer, I also did a video review and a video on how to upgrade the hard drive to an SSD on this machine. So if you're interested in either of those, check out my other videos. And if you found this useful, feel free to like the video or subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.